This is David Kraft. I'm the editor in chief of Workboat Magazine and Workboat.com. And today we're talking to uh, Betty Jean and John Yank of Yank Marine. They're in Cape May County, Tuckahoe, New Jersey. I'd say about an hour south of Philly. And uh, the shipyard was uh, established by John in 1969, I believe, which is, as a, as a Mets fan, I can't forget that. That's the year of the Miracle Mets. So um, <laughs> they also have another location too, Yank Marine Services. There, that's in Dorchester. That's about 20 minutes west of where they are right now. And um, they added an 820 metric uh, ton marine travel lift, I believe, down there in 2017. And that enables them in both locations to essentially build and repair vessels up to 200 feet. So you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the, uh, the first question for the, view, for the people watching this is, uh, Betty, Jean, and John, where, where are you guys uh, coming from right now at this interview? What, what, where are you right now? We are in the wheelhouse of the latest ferry that John has completed for New York Waterway. It's the Franklin D. Roosevelt. It's ready to be delivered. And we thought on this rainy day, this might be the brightest place to, uh, to have the interview. And um, if it was clearer, you would be able to see the skyline of Atlantic City out the front windows here. But it's quite overcast. It's been raining all day. What do you, you're south of Atlantic City, I'd say what, about an hour and a half? Hour, hour and a half? No, you, you can see Atlantic City from the yard on a clear day. Oh, that close. So we're half an hour oh, from wow. Atlantic City. We're, we're just about halfway between Atlantic City and Cape May. All right, well, uh, that's great. That's, uh, that's pretty creative where you're coming from, and, and the people, I'm sure, are very interested in that. Uh, I'm going to get right in. Of course, everybody, it's all about uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus. So I guess the first question I want to ask you is how, you, how have you been dealing with the New Jersey uh, restrictions at the shipyards, you know, requirements for uh, worker visitor separation, arrival departure time, sanitation, disinfecting, you know, things like that. Right. Um, it's been difficult. Uh, we have locked out all the visitors, all the boat owners. Um, they didn't take it too well in the beginning because they thought we were being um, – I guess overzealous about the whole thing, but um, it eventually trickled down to their locations as well, their states, their home states. So we've locked out all the visitors, the deliveries are taken at the gate, uh, everyone is wearing masks, we're trying to social distance, um, we've been dis disinfecting everything constantly, um, but even so we've had one employee test positive. Okay. So um, it's been challenging. Has it, has it affected because your construction of, um, uh, is this vessel the first of three for New York Waterway? Is that what you said? Um, yes, this is first the first of three. Uh, the Molly Pitcher, of course, and the Betsy Ross we delivered in 15 right. and 16. 15 and 16. Uh, this is the first, first of three more. Um, the same size, just not double, not two decks, just a single deck. Well, actually, it's, it's, it's two decks, but they're not both enclosed like the other boats. Um, these were, you know, scheduled to be delivered now. Um, they've postponed picking this one up because quite frankly, um, they had 20 routes, uh, in and out of Manhattan from, uh, Weehawken and they're down to one route and it's very limited service. They've laid it off 80% of their employees. And, um, so they had no need for these new ferries at this point. That's what, that's what I was going to ask you is if any of that has affected the deliveries or um, Yeah, they, they postponed this delivery and they, they've uh, you know, we've cut back on uh, the hours that we're putting in the other two hulls that are under construction for them. Um, fortunately, we do have other work in the yard that was here when everything was shut down. So, but none of our customers are in a good position right now. I mean, it's it's affected the commercial fishermen because they have no market for their fish. Right, right. It's affected the party boat, um, you know, customers. They're not allowed to operate. The echo tours and whale watchers, they're not allowed to operate. Uh, we have a dinner cruise vessel in the yard. Of course, they're not allowed to operate. So it's really affected all of our customers except the military. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to ask you. I guess you just answered part of that was, 
you know, ha have customers call the new needs because of the conditions which they have. You know, in the fishing sector, scallops in particular, I know are, um, we were hearing that some owners of these Kirk from, on the national fisherman side, um, that some owners were using the slow markets to put maintenance and replacements into some of their boats while few others fish. Have, have you seen anything similar to that in the we past? Haven't seen, we haven't seen that in either yard. No. Uh, we haven't really gotten any new work um, other than Coast Guard work and um, state of Delaware, I believe we have a job coming in and some of the construction companies, some of the, you know, the, the bridge construction companies, they, they've called and, you know, we're going to be doing work for them. But as far as the commercial fishermen know, we haven't seen anyone taking advantage of the downtime to maintain their boats because I guess, fr frankly, the cash flow isn't there. Right. So um, you, I, I imagine you have other ongoing projects besides these ferries. How has all this effect, how is all this affecting uh, those other ongoing projects you have? Is there delays or other changes in scheduling deliveries? We've had some delays. Um, we had two Coast Guard boats in, in the Dorchester yard when we shut down. So of course they're timed contracts and we were working on them, but we had delays in getting parts because most of the, you know, suppliers were trying to work remotely. And so we've had some delays that way. We've had some bad weather, which also affected, you know, us, our ability to finish the jobs outside. Um, but it's really, it's really affected all of our customers. Like I said, except for like the military, right. um, you know, that everyone's really hard hit. I mean, speaking of the military, I know um, part of the expansion when you added the 820 metric ton uh, travel lift down down in Dorchester, I mean, part of that was so you could handle like Coast Guard vessels like their, CB, their CPPs, their Coastal Patrol boats and things like that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so what did um, you see from that sector, from the Coast Guard, et cetera? Uh, we haven't we haven't worked on any of any of the 87s yet. Uh, we're still working on 45s and 47s, which of course we can pick up with a 50 ton lift. Um, we haven't had the opportunity to bid on any of those yet. Uh, we're looking forward to it. We're also looking for looking forward to the uh, U.S. Army contract, which is a five year contract. John holds it at the Tuckahoe Yard, but he can only work on some of the smaller classes of the Army vessels and. Uh, the, with the Dorchester lift, we will be able to work on all of the vessels except two, which I think are too wide. They're 68 feet right. wide or something like that. So we are looking forward to bidding on that. And that was out for bid, quite honestly, now. And they have postponed it now three times um, for the, you know, the deadline's now been extended to June 1st. So uh, we're ready to submit our bid, but they postponed it because of you know the shutdowns so so how are how are uh, you guys doing as far as uh, ongoing operations have you applied for anything like the uh, P the ppp program or anything from the uh, the government yet we have we applied to the sba for the ten thousand dollar grant and okay. we just received that this morning oh that's great um, yeah yeah that was great and we have applied for the ppp to our local bank that we use for all of our accounts and it's in the process uh, we missed the first round but uh we're in line for the second round which we hope will you know be open up on monday um the problem that i'm hearing from our some of our other customers is um for instance i spoke to the lobster house this morning mm -hmm. and they're in cape may and it's he's also cold spring fish and supply and they have their own commercial fishing fleet as well as the restaurants and the fish market and he said, you know, it, that program is really no, of no value to him because he's not allowed to open his restaurants and the clock starts once you receive the money and you have eight weeks to use it for payroll. Well, he's like, I can't open the restaurants, so I can't use the money. And um, I spoke to New York Waterway as well um, this morning and they said they applied and they did get their money for the PPP, but they don't see this shutdown ending in eight weeks um so they said you know once again the clock starts when you get the money and they can't bring their employees back for eight weeks and use this money to pay the payroll 
and then have to lay them off at the end of eight weeks. Right. So, um, you know, we're, we are working, so we're in a different position where we can use it if we get it to maintain our payroll. And it's also for your utilities and um, any rents you might have um, as well, I, I think are included. Yes, because so, I assume that you, you still have a certain number, a certain percentage of your workers are, on, are still uh, working because you're, you, you have some ongoing projects, albeit they've been slowed down or pushed back a bit, the delivery days, but you still have to produce these. these right, products. yeah, yes, yeah. yes, we do, we do. We have a lot of people out uh, because, uh, well, we have, like I said, we had one employee test positive. We have a couple people out that are self-quarantined because they worked in the vicinity of this person. Uh, we have some people that are out because, of course, the schools are all out and their children are all home and they're, they're trying to homeschool them. Right. So um, we have a small crew, but we're still working. What is, if, if you, if you, if you want to share with me, what, what is your normal uh, employee level and, and what kind of level are you at now, right now? We normally have uh, at least 40 people in Takahoe. It fluctuates up and down, uh, but it's normally at least 40. And in Dorchester, we normally have 10 people, or 10 to 12 people over there working. Um, and we have, I think, five or six left in Dorchester at the moment, and there's seven um, yard, you know, guys that are working in the yard right. here in, in Tuckahoe. Um, our office, our office uh, staff is working remotely, and um, I'm going to work in Dorchester, uh, but the rest of the staff is working remotely for uh, as far as the office staff goes. Okay. Um Get, uh, get, getting to uh, to a different subject right now, which is offshore wind. Um, I know that's an area where, once all this cl clears up or, or goes away, that that is one area that I'm sure Yank Marine, like you said, wants to get into. Uh, Very interesting. Yes. So there seems to be only a few CTVs in progress uh, at the moment uh, at Blount at Blount and Sinesco. And uh, not much is expected until uh, Boehm completes its EIS, you know, for Vineyard Wind. Uh, and, and they have to do, as you know, the cum cumulative impact study still, as it affects affecting the fishing lanes, et cetera. Um, are you hearing from potential operators about uh, what their future needs uh, may be uh, when uh, Boehm com uh, completes that? You know, from, from, your, from your perspective, is there any sense of what, uh, there's a timeline on those type of orders? No, uh, right now we haven't been hearing anything. And I'd say in the last six months, we haven't heard from any operators. Um, prior to that, uh, a year to a year and a half ago, we had a flurry of uh, interest from uh, potential operators and it wanted prices on various designs and, you know, for CTVs. But I think it was because they needed to provide a price to the um, uh the companies the, uh, that were actually installing it, uh, you know, the Orsteds and, and those companies wanted pricing to submit their, their application, I guess, to the, to the BOM. Okay. Okay. I guess um, one final question is, as we all know, is in Workboat, and I'm sure you, you two know a little about it. In August, you announced that your business was up for sale. I don't know why John would want to retire, but, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but well, you, you announced John, that. It, it, what is the status of that? Have you put it on hold also like everything else? Um, we have. We have. We would still like to sell it. We would both like to retire. Um, John just turned 80 in October. We'd like a little bit of time to ourselves. Um, you know, and when, when someone comes along, we'll certainly be willing to discuss it. But at this point, it's business as usual. And your daughter doesn't want to take it over, huh? <laughs> no, we have eight children between us, and nobody wants it. <laughs> nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. All right. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, that's pretty much it, huh? Same thing. No, it's, I think we, were, we covered it pretty much, everything we need to. Okay. Yeah, then. I Let's just hope this is all over soon for all of us. Okay, thanks, Betty Jean and John. Uh, coming thanks, from the wheelhouse of a New York ferry, I, I love it. So, and stay safe and 
good luck and, and stay healthy too. You too. Thank you very much, Dave.